if you've been confident homeschooling the younger years, high school level math is where a lot of us get nervous. That was the case for me. So today I'm going to share with you five different Algebra 1 programs that you can consider. Now, if you are new here, welcome, I'm Trisha, and I am a homeschooling mom with three kids. My oldest, oh, I can't even believe it's time to say this, my oldest is going to be a senior this year. Um, and my other ones, my boys will be eighth grade and sixth grade. My daughter has completed all of her math that she will need to graduate. Last year at the community college, she did um, pre-calculus and statistics. So she is done with math. What math? should you consider. I said I'm going to share five of them with you today. Four of them we have used and the fifth one is what we are going to use the school year with my eighth grader. Before I get started, if you want additional information about any of these or you'd like to see it more in depth, flip through it, please let me know and I will try to get that scheduled as soon as I can. So the first one is Elementary Algebra by Harold Jacobs. This one I learned about from the Well-Trained Mind Boards years ago. It has been around for a gazillion years. I think it was first published in like the mid-1970s. It has recently been republished by Masterbooks, which is a Christian curriculum. As far as I'm aware, they have had no Christian content to it. But I want to make you aware that if you buy a newer version, it is coming from them. This one I got used at our local homeschool used bookstore, but I've seen, I see them pretty regularly on like the Blood Train Mind Classified Boards, eBay, that kind of thing. But what intrigued me and why I chose this one specifically was for my rising eighth grader, he is very story in, story oriented. He likes Beast Academy, Map, Life of Fred, Story of the World, um, anything that presents the information as a story, he's intrigued by it. And each chapter, each lesson in this book starts with some kind of a short story. It's like half a page, so it's not a lot if you have a kid who does not enjoy reading much, where they introduce whatever the topic is. Then it goes into um, four sets of problems. The first one is a, some review from previous ones, and then sets two and three are for the most recent content. And then set four is some kind of a critical thinking problem using the information you've, you've learned in that section. So it might be some kind of a puzzle or something. My kiddo really likes it. So we actually used this one last year along with what I'm gonna show you next, like a Fred, as a kind of a filler between ending Beast Academy five and then starting algebra one. I just wanted something that would, yeah, just kind of fill in a few little gaps and bide some time to increase the maturity before we start algebra one. <laughs> um, so we would start with the, um, we start every lesson with set for the puzzle one from the lesson before, because he really liked that. So the way to get him going and then we would do the story. Step one, we would complete bits and pieces of. They're not very long, like 10 problems or so, and they're pretty quick ones. So we would do maybe half of them, and usually we do them out loud. And then I would pick either set two or set three. Set two's answers are in the back of the book, but that's the only one. Now, should you buy a parent's guide or a solutions guide? Um, I was confident to do it without a solutions guide for the other problems. Your comfort level, I don't know, I'll have to decide. When Master Books took the book, um, they took out set three, which is the set, like set two and set three are basically the same problems. Different numbers, but even the same kind of problems. They took out set three and put them in the solutions guide. So they're still available, they're just not in the book. At the end of each chapter, they do have a summary, summary review and a couple sets of review problems. There are no tests in here. I do not know if there are tests available or not. So that is uh, Elementary Algebra by Harold Jacobs. 
as I said, my kiddo, who I bought that one for, really likes stories. And so, I have a friend as well we also used last year. We will continue using this this year as well throughout his algebra one. If you don't know anything about Life of Fred, it is a very different math program. And for a lot of us, not quite comfortable counting it as a full program. What what that what you're comfortable with, I don't know. Like that's really gonna be something you're gonna have to choose decide for yourself. But that said, if you have a kiddo who enjoys stories, I think Life of Fred is a fantastic supper. We have used Life of Fred since he was um, five. He's 13 now. And he loves it. We have never used it as a main spy. We've always used it just as a story to go along with whatever other math he's doing. He has picked up a lot from it. There is more than just math in here, too. There's just interesting things. I try to resist liking for him, but there's just, I do. I like it. <laughs> it's a fun book. So if you do not know, um, each chapter in Life of Fred is the story of a five-year-old professor, math professor at a university. Yes, it's a quirky story. He just goes through and teaches math through the story. At the end of each story, and the stories are a couple pages, two, three pages, depending. Um, there are questions for your student to work through. And at the end of each section, they have something called a bridge, which is a set of problems to review everything that's been in those other lessons. There are three bridges so that if your student doesn't do well on one of them, they can do another one, or if you want to just assign all three of them, you can do it that way. Kind of a quiz, like, do you do well enough to go over the bridge to the next chapter? Solutions are included in here, and they do a pretty good job of explaining it, not just giving you the answer, but explaining how to get the answer. And this one is the beginning algebra book. That's how this one is labeled. They, Like I said, they do have pre-algebra. I think there are three pre-algebra books. And then they have advanced algebra. They have geometry. It goes through calculus, I believe, is the top one. So this one, Lyle's Algebra, was my daughter's primary math series as she was going through high school. This one is called Introductory Algebra. Like I said, they all have different names. It drives me crazy. I bought this one on Amazon. That's where I got all of her Lyle ones from their used. Each of them were around five dollars plus shipping. One of them, I think, was even I think it came out with shipping to be like six dollars. <laughs> so it's a great deal if you can find when you can find them. Now, this is another one that I found out about from the well-trained mind boards. We started it with the pre-algebra book, and then for beginning with Algebra 1, I transitioned her to taking a live online math class from myhomeschoolmathclass.com, which I will, I have a video about that I did several years ago. So I will leave that down there. We love, love, love Miss Perkins over there. We were very sad to see her go. I had planned to use it with Ben this year, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's the best fit for him at this level. More about what he'll use at Command. This one, like I said, traditional math textbook, but it is fantastic. This is the ninth edition. Each edition doesn't have major changes, so if you find a different one, go with it. Each section begins with several pages of teaching it. There are problems that you can do to go along as your as, um, with the text part, and then. There are a couple pages of problems for each section. Now they do have the answers to every section or every set of problems in here. However, they only have the odd answers. There are also complete solutions for selected problems only. So if you are someone who wants a complete solution set and or answers to every single problem, you may want to not choose this one. You can find answer keys for this, but it's, it can be really difficult. So 
just know that if you are choosing this one, make sure you get the answer key if that's something that's important to you. She was well prepared to take pre-calculus as a junior at the community college Thanks with this series. I, I absolutely loved it. Now, my one caution with this one is that there is a lot of text on these pages, which was, a, for Elizabeth was fine, for Ben, way too much. And that was an advantage of the Jacobs, much less on the page on those. She used Math Mammoth for elementary. We completed through five and then bits and pieces of six before we started her in Lyle's pre-algebra. For Ben, Math Mammoth has too much on the page, so Beast Academy is what he used because it was, again, much less on the page. So, anyway, that's a con against the swim for some kids because there is a lot, and I know that can be distracting or feel overwhelming for some kids. Now, the next one is one I'm going to say almost unequivocally, you're going to want the parent's guide to, or the solution set to it. <laughs> Because the next one is a math program that is absolutely fantastic, but if you have a child who does not, does not appreciate or isn't comfortable struggling through problems, this is not going to be one you're probably going to want to consider. You do not have, oh, I should say, it's the art of problem solving, and this one's introduction to algebra. It has a reputation of being very advanced. And I would say it's a difficult program. We actually use, so like I said, Elizabeth did Algebra 1 with Lyles. She did that as a seventh grade. In retrospect, I wish I would have waited till eighth grade, I think, with her. Well, that's not entirely true. She was fine with it. Um, that's a story for another video. However, I wasn't sure about putting her in geometry degree. Again, sorry for another video. So, we, oh, staying on topic though, we used this one as kind of biding time for eighth grade. We used a few different programs actually, but this was one of them. And it is a good program. But, two things. One, your student has to be okay with struggling through math problems. Because if you're familiar with Beast Academy, which is by the same company, they really teach a strong sense of like number sense and working with problems and breaking problems apart and putting them back together and using all those pieces. But if you're coming, especially if you're coming from something like teaching textbooks, <laughs> this one is going to be a tough, very tough program. For example, it starts out each lesson with the work. So your child is going to try to work through the problems before being taught things. Now, that's great if you have a kid who can, can approach math that way and try to struggle through them and figure out and use their other skills that they've already learned. But most of us haven't had that kind of um, math upbringing, which I actually think is a flaw in our math system, but again, video or topic for another video. So, all of that to say, it is a fantastic program. Your child will come out of it a strong math student, but be prepared. And by the solutions guide. <laughs> The solutions guide is a complete solutions, so it's not just the answers. They're going to show you how to get to it, but again, it's going to be a tough one. Good. You don't, again, you don't have to have an advanced math student, but you have to have a student who is willing to really work through things. And then the last one, and it's the one that we are primarily going to use the school year, along with, I expect, some of the story parts of Jacob's algebra, and then definitely we will continue on the thread. So next one, we are putting Ben in Mr. D's math class. 
Now, we chose the Sudeys for a few reasons. One, it's a strong program, but not a rigorous one. And for him, that's going to be fine. I don't expect him to be in the math field outside of as an adult, but I need him to just have a strong understanding. So that was the key. Second, self-paced. So we are not bound to anyone else's schedule. If he gets onto a section that he needs more time with or one that he can speed through. For him, that's really important. Like once he's mastered something, he wants to just move on. And it's worked for him so far. So I don't want to have him tied down to working through, like working at someone else's pace in that regard. Again, maturity will help that, I hope. <laughs> um, I also learned something that he could take over some of the control, that I wasn't doing all of the teaching of it anymore because we've all, always done math together. Through middle school, that's how I like to do math. At the elbow with me supervising well, for various reasons, again, another video. <laughs> I've got like four video ideas based on this one. The videos are online, but you can print out note sheets that your student can take notes as they watch the video, and the, sil the practice problems can be printed out as well, and the quizzes, I believe, can be printed out too. So for more high school help, check out the playlist on your screen, and I will see you in the next video.